Hello and guten tag from Essen in the Ruhr region of Germany. You join me as I'm just making my way into Essen Hauptbahnhof, or to give its English name, Essen Main Station, where I'll be catching one of Deutsche Bahn's locomotive hauled intercity services down to Stuttgart. Our route today will see us travel southeast, covering around 450 kilometres or 280 miles, with a scheduled travel time of 5 hours and 48 minutes. I should also point out that high speed intercity express trains also operate between Essen and Stuttgart and cover the distance in just over 3 hours, so this is by no means the fastest way of travelling between the two cities. Now before we get started, all that's left for me to do is to remind you to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. The main entrance brings you into this big long concourse. While hardly an architectural masterpiece, it certainly is very utilitarian, with an excellent array of shops and restaurants at your disposal. I found that German stations are often very well designed in this sense, and this is certainly something we could learn from them over here in the UK. You'll also find the usual big and clear departure boards, with information being displayed in German, English and French. And now just a brief bit about the history of the station. The current station building opened in 1959 after its predecessor was heavily damaged during the Second World War. The last major refurbishment works at Essen Hauptbahnhof were completed in late 2009. While it was too early for my train to be displayed on the departure boards, as I had my ticket loaded on my phone, I was able to find that my train would be departing from Platform 2 this evening. The service we'll be catching a ride on this evening is the 1758 to Stuttgart Hauptbahnhof, train number Intercity 2213. Also, just a quick note about ticket buying facilities. The station features the usual suspects such as standalone ticket machines and a staff ticket office. However, I'd always recommend purchasing online and as far in advance as possible in order to ensure that you're getting the best value for money. Eventually, my train arrives from Binz in the northeast of Germany with a delay of a couple of minutes. I guess this is excusable given that the train has already been travelling for over seven hours. Today's train consists of a rake of Intercity 1 coaches hauled by a DB Class 101 electric locomotive built by Adtrans. The locomotive has a top speed of 220 km an hour or 137 miles an hour, while the coaches are authorised for speeds of up to 200 km an hour or 125 miles an hour. Now, for today's trip down to Stuttgart, I've booked a first class ticket and, as I've already covered the compartments in a previous review, I've reserved a seat in the open saloon. Hopefully I'll be able to show you this if I can actually get this door to open. <laughs> Well, it soon became clear why the door wouldn't open, as the coach my seat was in was locked out of service due to the air conditioning having failed. While it is frustrating that it was my coach that was locked out of service, this was a fair move from Deutsche Bahn in my opinion, as the day I filmed this was scorching hot and there's no way you'd really want to spend 6 hours in a non-air conditioned coach on a day like this. That said, I do now have the task of trying to find an empty compartment so I can film my video without disturbing other passengers. However, there was a bit of luck on my side this day as the train wasn't particularly busy so I didn't have too much of an issue finding an unreserved compartment. By the time I'd found a seat, we had already departed Essen and had begun our near 6 hour journey to Stuttgart. Now that we've departed, I should probably take a few moments to show you around the compartment. The seats are nicely spaced out and there's a good amount of legroom, even if you were to find yourself sitting opposite someone. Between the rows of seats, you'll find an excellent work surface in the form of this nice big fold-out table. I found the seats really quite comfortable to be honest thanks to the fact that they're fairly well padded, nicely shaped and with winged headrests adding to the overall comfort. Oh, and don't you think the lever upholstery adds a really nice touch of class? 
You'll also find two power outlets per row of three and the seats themselves feature a small amount of recline although this is really nothing special. A set of curtains are also provided and you'll find a reading light in the panel above your head. The compartments feature plenty in the way of luggage storage with racks being located above each row of three. Below each luggage rack, you'll find a nice vanity mirror as well as a load of coat hooks. One of the main benefits of travelling in compartments is the level of privacy on offer, providing you can get one to yourself that is. That said, the doors and panels are made of glass so people passing by in the aisle can still see in easily. Above the door, you'll find a dial to control the volume of the PA system, although these never seem to work, as well as a switch to control the big main light. Lastly and thankfully, there's a dial to control the temperature of the compartment below the window and, needless to say, I whack this all the way down to give me a bit of respite from the oven outside. Our first major calling point after leaving Essen is in the city of Duisburg. Duisburg was actually a city-state up until about 1290, in much the same way as the likes of Singapore and Monaco are today. Nowadays, it's home to Duisburg Port, which is actually the world's largest inland port and is located on the River Rhine. Next is Dusseldorf. The city may be a well-known financial centre, but did you know that Dusseldorf actually hosts an annual Japan Day when the city becomes immersed in Japanese culture? I certainly had no idea that this was a thing until I was doing the research for this video, but as someone who's been to and loves Japan, I think that's cool as heck, don't you? As we continue towards Stuttgart, here's just a quick insert about my Patreon page. Patrons gain access to most of my videos two weeks before everyone else, and best of all, without all those annoying ads. You can get these perks yourself for as little as $1 per month. A link to my Patreon page can be found in the top right corner of the screen now, as well as in the description below. We soon arrive in the city of Cologne, although we stop at Köln Messe Deutz rather than the main station, Köln Hauptbahnhof, which is just the other side of the Rhine from us. Cologne is Germany's fourth largest city, being home to around 3.6 million people in its wider metropolitan area and was founded by the Romans in the first century. Just to the south of Cologne, we stop in the city of Bonn. Bonn is known for being the birthplace of Ludwig van Beethoven, who is one of Europe's most celebrated classical musicians and was born in the city in 1770. Okay, time for a little wonder. In the coach behind mine, you'll find the Board Bistro Cafe car, which has a buffet counter service selling drinks and snacks. And note that this still comes at an extra cost, regardless of whether you're travelling in first or second class. You'll also find some additional first class, open saloon and compartment seating in this coach, although it would appear as though the AC had failed here too. Just spare a thought for a moment for the poor catering crew who had to endure this for the full trip as it was absolutely sweltering in here. I think this is the hottest I've ever known Germany actually, the day I filmed this. Beyond this, you'll find some family compartments that are designated as second class. The majority of second class is actually made up of open saloon seating laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration. 
This is still a pretty good option in my opinion, and while I've never tried this seat on an intercity train, it's very similar to the ones found on a lot of the unrefurbished intercity express trains, so I can vouch for the fact that they are really quite comfortable. Just as with the compartments, there's an abundance of luggage storage available in the open saloon. The overhead racks are massive and there are also larger stacks situated at either end of each coach. Now no train tours complete without a look at the ablutions and you'll find a toilet situated at either end of each coach. As well as all the usual suspects, they also feature one of them plug sockets designed for razors. And as far as I could tell, everything was clean, well stocked and in good working order. Just one last thing, for some reason I didn't get any footage of this, but this train does also boast a number of wheelchair and bicycle spaces, although these need to be reserved in advance and as an additional charge for using the bicycle spaces as well. As dusk begins to set in, we arrive at our next calling point of Kublenz Hauptbahnhof. The city's name is derived from the Latin word for confluence, a reference to the fact that this is where the River Moselle meets the River Rhine. You can change here in Kublenz for services operated by the Luxembourg National Railway Company, CFL, such as the one seen here. I'm really hoping to cover CFL in a future review as, while a fare is charged for international journeys, you can travel on the trains in second class, as well as use all buses and trams domestically within Luxembourg completely free of charge, and I think it'd be really interesting to see what you actually get for nothing. The portion of the trip between Kublenz and Mainz is where you'll find the best of the scenery as we wind our way along the West Rhine Railway and my god how good does it look on a beautiful sunny evening like today. This is easily one of the most scenic stretches of railway I've travelled along in Germany, if not Europe. If you look closely, you can even see trains running on the opposite bank of the Rhine. We'll eventually meet with that line once we arrive in Mainz. Darkness is almost upon us by the time we reach the city of Mainz at approximately 9pm. The city's main station is a major interchange, being served by intercity and intercity express services to all corners of Germany, as well as international trains to neighbouring Austria and Switzerland.
Our last major calling point en route to Stuttgart is in the city of Mannheim. Mannheim is twinned with, amongst other places of course, Swansea back in Wales in the UK. I featured this in a video a couple of weeks ago so check that out in the top right corner of the screen if you haven't already. So overall, I found these old locomotive hauled intercity trains to be really quite good. Now sure, the failed air conditioning wasn't great and they do take quite a bit longer to cover the distance between Essen and Stuttgart than their high speed counterparts, but these are very comfortable trains and at the end of the day, who doesn't love a good old classic loco hauled experience? Couple that with some rather picturesque scenery and you've got yourself a rather splendid experience I think. So I guess you're wondering how much all this cost me. I paid €51.90 Euros for my first class ticket, booking approximately three weeks in advance. Given how far I booked ahead, I do think that is rather expensive, don't you? That said, the fares on the intercity services and the high speed intercity express services seem to be exactly the same and a quick search on the Deutsche Bahn site showed that they start for around €29.90 Euros for second class or €33.90 Euros for first class and in my opinion that's much better value for money. As always though, I appreciate that these are just my thoughts and opinions, so be sure to let me know what you thought of the experience in the comments below. Also, if you had the choice, what would you choose? The slower but more scenic intercity train, or the faster, more utilitarian intercity express train? And with that, welcome to Essen Hauptbahnhof, where we've arrived approximately 10 minutes late at about 20 past 11 at night. I do hope you enjoyed the video, if you are new to the channel be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Friday!